today we're going to show you how to take this old Johnson actuator off, this old gearbox model that you can no longer get. You can see our actuators like cooked, it's not working. And we're going to replace it with this actuator, a newer style self calibration model. It's kind of like a boat Here we have a failed actuator assembly on a Johnson controlled three way globe valve. It is stuck in the up position. It's All right, here's our new actuator. Here's our very useful instruction set and the supplied element. Before we do any work, we're gonna go in and turn off our controller. This will shut off the entire unit and power to our actuator. It's our Metasys controller, it's our power. And we have lost power. And we'll turn off our main power supply to the air handler. Here's the junction box for the wiring, which we will take off this cover. All low voltage wires and the power is off. Here's the connection for the short jumper wire that goes to our actuator. Our new actuator comes with a short lead, which we're going to tie into these connections into this junction box. Next I'll unhook the uh, armor flex going to the box because of where the location is of this actuator. You need to retrofit this to my new one. Next I'm going to loosen the set screw that holds the old val valve actuator to the valve. Pull the pin. Here's the front side of our old actuator that is jammed up. I need to loosen the U-bolts uh, that tighten to the gearbox assembly so I can free this up to remove it. So I'm using a 10 millimeter wrench. This should free the gearbox from our frozen actuator. Now I can pull this pin out because I've taken the pressure off. actuator. Now we just have to remove that nut from the top of our glow valve. Now we'll take the top of this off and our top of our valve will be ready for our new actuator. All right here's our replacement actuator. There it is. Our armor flex piece from our old actuator. Put it on this new one into this piece you can see I'm feeding the pigtail into the armor we have flex. our wires pulled through our armor flex and I just got to tighten up now we have our valve ready to install we want to insert the supplied Allen wrench we put a couple cranks down on the manual so it loosens up this set screw or this locking mechanism that holds it to the valve once you put a couple turns on this. To manually move the valve, you're gonna insert the Allen wrench and twist. And then to lock, you just push down and then let it go. And now it's locked. Now you can spin Your locking nut for your stem. Now that we put a turn on top of our manual override screw and then pushed it down to lock it, now we can freely turn our locking me mechanism for our valve. And this, these threads will go into the onto the stem of the valve before we can place 
the valve actuator on top of the valve, we have to take this screw out, this set screw. And this is how it locks on top of the valve. This screw comes loose and that opens up and sets on top of the valve. All right, I've placed the actuator on top of the valve. Now I need to thread the stem into the actuator. Valve threaded into the actuator. Now I'm going to lock the, tighten the screw down for the locking base using this set screw. Supply the Allen wrench and unlock the manual override. And that will pull the valve back up. This is a self-calibrating valve. Once I get it locked in place and turn the power on, it will calibrate itself. Now that I have everything tightened down, I can pull my wires back into my box. Using the existing Armor Flex, we're using it. All right, we're using our factory wiring, how the actuator is wired from the factory. Our red wire for our new actuator is our 24 volt. Our black is our ground or common. And our gray is gonna be our zero to 10 VDC wiring, which is our control wire. So now we have to find out what our old wiring is and match it up. Here's our old actuator, which is why I always cut the wires so I can always go back and figure out what's what. But our black wire on our old actuator, our old wiring will be common. Our white wire will be 24 volts, that's uh, AC. And then our pink wire, or peach, or I'm kind of colorblind, will be our VDC, which is our control wire, which is zero to 10 volts DC. So when you're trying to figure out your wiring, if you have DC on any of your wires that's going to be your control wire and you can always trace it back to your controller you can always trace your wiring back to your controller if it's well labeled like this one is we can go back to the board and figure out what wires what Here you can see we got our wiring all hooked up the orange wire is a feedback wire which isn't used in this application our black is black Black to black is ground. Our white coming into our red is our 24 volt AC. And then our pink or rose color wire coming into our gray is our input from our controller, which is uh, zero to 10 volts DC. Now I can uh, button this up. this model of valve, this is a cooling valve, so on this valve, down is open and up is closed. The spring return function on this actuator is spring return up. So closed position on our cooling valve is our fail safe. This valve, when I turn it on, it should self calibrate or it may just go straight to open. We're going to turn the power back on to our air handler and put an auto. And then we will turn on our controller. And our controller's on. And we'll see if we have any movement on our valve. Our cooling valve has done its calibration. It is holding its position and functioning properly. For some reason your valve doesn't calibrate properly, you can take this cover off and underneath there there's a small button that you can push that will recalibrate the valve if you have any problems or you have to readjust your valve for your, uh, your reach on your threaded parts. Sometimes if you have to readjust, you can just come up here and hit the reset button. It's a small button on top. 
once you take the blue cover off. Sometimes you may have to change the wiring according to the manual, depending on what your input from your controller is. Ours is a VDC, but if you have milliamps, it has the optional wiring for milliamps. And then if you need to reverse the wiring, there's also a switch in there to reverse the, uh, the function. But we're going with the factory wiring, which would be proportional. VDC. Right, after installing our valve, we realized that our function is down, is open. So now we have to reverse the actuator because it is currently set up as a heat valve. So we have to reverse the function. We'll take the cover off the top and go from there. We have to gain access to our top of our actuator. So we take these screws off. Okay, here we go. We'll take our cover off. We got the cover taken off of our actuator. We need to reverse our dip switch here where it says direct action or reverse action. So we're gonna go to reverse action on, which would be number five, dip switch number five. We're gonna switch that. All right, we've turned our power off to our controller and we're gonna switch dip switch number five to on. Now we've put it to the on position dip switch number five, which will be reverse at. Now that we've reversed, our cooling valve is now going to the open position, which is down, which is proper function for this application. Now we're going to put our cover back on and tighten the screws back up. 